Hey everybody, it's Dave here, and today I'm going to show you how I put my ceiling fan in my cargo trailer installed, and I'll show you how I did it. So I'll make sure I put links in the description below for the fan and everything I use as far as materials. And uh, if you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you'll be notified when I put out the next video on my cargo trailer uh, renovation and upgrade here. So let's get to it today. Ceiling fan install. We'll pack our bags and quit our jobs and have a holiday for two. Good morning. I'm going to show you my fan that I got for my cargo trailer. This is a, a Star Vent six speed vent fan. And I got this on, just came in about well, a few days ago on Amazon. So I'm going to show you what's in the box. They run about $140 on Amazon. Uh, price the Fantastic fans, they were about $300. This one, these were about $140. And they're 12 volt. The other thing I went ahead and ordered was some die core uh, tape to put around the fan as well as the window. When I put the window on the cargo trailer, I'll use this stuff around the window as well. I also have an outlet that I'm going to put on the cargo trailer, so there's enough of this. It says there's 30 feet of it, so I think I have enough to last for a couple of projects. Plus some of this lap sealant. This will be for the uh, ceiling fan. It's self-leveling lap sealant by Dicor, and you can get this, these, uh, I'll put the links for both of these, you can get these on Amazon. You'll need a caulking gun. For uh, for this, you'll need a caulking gun. All right, so let's see what's in the box here. <clears throat> oh, they got a fuse on top, don't forget. When you open the box, watch out, there's some two fuses on top. Um, a little owner's manual instructions. tools, the hardware, you want to make sure you save all this stuff, don't lose your hardware and your uh, fuses. Well protected, there's your vent cover on top. Kind of the inside. This will be the uh, fuse goes in here. The fuse goes right in here. You got six speeds, reversible, on and off. This is the. Uh, this opens up. This lever here opens up your uh, vent on top. This is an adapter. If you have a like an RV motorhome trailer with a deep ceiling, you would use this as an, uh, your adapter to put this on the inside. The way I'm going to mount this, of course, I'm going to put the die core tape around the inside of here, and then lay it down. Cut a hole, 14 by 14 hole. Make sure you. Leave room for your wires. So I'm going to make some room for my wires. I'm going to run these wires to the uh, driver's side of the trailer and then mount it in like that. And then I'm going to hook these up. I have a 12 volt extension that I've got ordered. It's about 15 feet long, so this will go along the roof line down to my blue eddy i'm going to run these down so it'll plug into the blue eddy just getting everything set up to uh for the fan here and i did some measurements and the first measurement i wanted was the distance from where it's going to go into the hole in the roof to where the uh, screw goes through and so that's one inch so what i did is Let's see if you can hope this shows up, but I'm going to have to screw in to this beam going across in order to get right into the center of this. This is kind of a U-shaped beam. 
a channel here this aluminum bar across the beam so this took a little doing i've got my 14 by 14 hole so one thing at a time just kind of want to do your due diligence on where you want to put your hole i kind of eyeballed it as far as center i used i know that this is sort of in the center already so i'm going to have to cut through here with some drill holes four drill holes and then i've got my jigsaw to go through i'm going to do it from the top though coming down but i'm going to put drill holes through first and then use those to kind of guide me through with my jigsaw out there so one all right i got my uh hole cut here for my uh outlet it's on the uh i'll show you where i put this this is going to be up in the front of the cargo trailer and I got one of these things. This is an outlet. It'll go right in there. Like that. And I have some self self-tapping screws I'm gonna put in there. Then once I get that in there, I can open this up and run my uh, solar or power into my uh, camper. So I got this off of Amazon. And then what I had to do to get the hole cut, because my what you need is a three and a half inch uh, hole cut drill. That's what you need right there. Put that in the light so you can see it. You need one of those drill bits for your drill, so you can cut through your so you can cut through your trailer. I started by cutting from the inside out. Once I got a little hole on the outside, then I took it from the outside and went in. All right, now what I'm going to do. And this little bay down here is where I'm going to put the blue eddy. And then I'm going to run the power for the blue eddy right out there. That's the inside of that port. So that's where I'm going to run the solar power into the blue eddy. And uh, this, is the, this is the wood that it cut from the inside. So I cut from the inside first. Little my little uh, <laughs> frisbee. All right, got it all finished here. Had some self-tapping uh, screws. I got it in there. Now the only thing I'll need want to do is put a little bead of. Uh, later on, I'll go back and put a little bead of silicon around here just to keep the water from coming in. There, but uh, that's good. I can run my uh, solar cable through there when I'm uh, camped, boondocking, and I can charge up. All right, so today's mission is to get my ceiling fan put in. And so the first thing I'm gonna do in just a moment is drill my pilot holes so that I can cut from the top in. So I'm gonna drill four pilot holes inside going up. I've got my 14 by 14 hole for the fan. The fan's gonna go right here. There, the first thing I'm gonna do is drill my four pilot holes. So first, this is the part I'm gonna hate doing, but I'm gonna have to drill, I'm gonna have to do it eventually. So this is the part I dread, cutting the four holes in. Making sure I got the right spots. The moment of truth. There's no turning back now.
was a little bigger. So I can get that jigsaw in. Now the next step is to go up on top and see how my holes look down. Alright, I got my hole uh, drilled out from inside. I drew some lines here so I could follow these guidelines here. I may need a file when I get done. I got a couple of files I can use to make sure everything's kind of smoothed out here. But that's the next step is get my drill and cut this hole. Let's do that. All right. Another thing, make sure you get for your jigsaw. I've got a uh, fine cut uh, blade on there for metal. So it's a fine cut. I think it's a 24, an 18 or a 24, one of those. Yeah, this is a 24 TP teeth per inch. So it's a 24 TPI. I was afraid I might go through the roof, but this helps a little bit. Uh, there we go. All right. Well, I got it in there. I had to do a little um, filing around the sides to get that to come in though. So just a little word of advice if you're doing one of these. Um, I wouldn't say make your hole any bigger, but keep that in mind. You want to give a little bit of extra room. I did exactly 14 by 14, but it still wasn't quite wide enough to get that in there the first shot. So I had to do a little bit of widening to get this in there. So just be aware of that. You might want to just give yourself a little extra room around the edge. I had to take the jigsaw and kind of trim off a millimeter on one side and a millimeter on the other side just to give me enough space so this would come in there. All right, so far so good. That's kind of what it looks like right now. And then I'm gonna wire these up over to the side and go down so I can plug into my Blue Eddy. And I still have to put the uh, die core sealant on the top and uh, screw them in. It's not even screwed in yet, so it's just kind of in there. But I did get it in there, so. <sighs> One thing at a time. So let me show you what it looks like. I did uh, put some of the lap self leveling uh sealing around here so i'm letting it dry it's pretty much dry i think right now it feels just a little tacky a couple things you're gonna want to know before you start tackling one of these um there aren't really a lot of good instructions on getting these put in um but basically the hole is 14 by 14 and my tip would be to cut it just a little bit of maybe a sixteenth inch bigger around than you might have might think. I ended up having to do some trimming around the edges in order to get that in there and fit. Let me show you what it looks like down below and how I set this up. So I've kind of got it wired up over here so I can plug it into my uh, uh, solar box. This is the uh, that opens and then I got the wires. I'm gonna run a I ran the wires up into the channel here, and I'll probably put some tape around here. Ooh, it is, it is really hot. 
I didn't insulate this, but you know, at some point in the future, I might consider that. But we don't do camping in the desert in the summertime, and I gotta tell you, that's hot right there. I can't even hold my hand on that. It's probably 140 degrees. Wow, it's hot. So I did run the wires in there, but I may pull them out of there. That's really hot. I don't know, it might melt my wires. I'm concerned about that now. I didn't even think about that. Let me show you what I did here. Now I knew that I was going to want to wire the uh, fan up with a cigarette lighter adapter. So I actually got this short adapter. Something just like this. I had to wire in right here. So this is one of those little adapters that's back here. So I have a little adapter back here. And I'm going to plug this in to my extension. This is my 12-volt uh, extension cord. So I'm going to run this from that adapter that's up there along the ceiling, and this is going to go down into the blue eddy. This is going to go into the ceiling adapter that I've got, and then I'm going to plug this into my charge box. So I've got it plugged in, and this is my extension cord. But I'm going to run this up and around this cord. I'm going to run up here, and then I've got a conduit that I'm going to put along the wall right here. I'm gonna put some of this plastic conduit and then run the orange line down through that white conduit down to this to the blue eddy. Alright I've got it plugged into my Zoom Bros right there. And let's see if it works. Alright so here's the power. Yay that's really quiet. So that's sucking the air up there. So I'm going to try some of the different speeds. Now I have it so it's blowing down. So this is low. This is number one here. That's, the, that's very slow. And let's try two. Oh. Now I can feel it. I can feel it. Let's see how many watts it's pulling here. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's pulling one watt. That's on second speed. So let me bump it up and see how many watts it's pulling. This is one watt on speed two. I just bumped it to four. On speed four, it's pulling about six watts. So let me bump it up to the highest speed. I think it's going to go up to about 14. So let me bump it up to 6. That's the highest speed, number 6. I just put it on 6 and it's really blowing. Let's see. And it's pulling 15, 16 watts on high speed. 15, 16 seems to be. But of course, most of the time, I'm probably going to leave it at about three. So I'll include uh, links in the description below for all the materials I use. The extension cord and the adapters. And this little adapter right here is important to have. Plus it's got extra fuses in here too. So hey everybody, hope you got something out of this. A uh, couple of little tips before I uh, say goodbye here. Number one, first tip is give yourself some time. I know you watch the videos on YouTube and everybody makes it look easy. This, just getting the ceiling fan in was a, probably about a four or five hour job. Uh, and there were some tools that I didn't have that I needed. It took a little extra time to get. Uh, plus I'm working in the Phoenix sun heat. So everything I did, I had to do in the morning while it's cool and like I said that is really hot right there so things another tip is when you're drilling uh, when you're drilling into some of these pieces I don't have a high-speed drill and I think I have the I have all the tools that I needed but I didn't have all the right tools and I think a high-speed drill would get into these a little bit easier there was a couple of times where I would like to have drilled into the, to the uh, steel beams across the top so hang in there, stay tuned. I'll show you some more as I get more done. This is Dave saying safe travels. Wherever you're going, be safe.
Have fun. Catch you later. Bye.